Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make some metal stamped jewelry. I've got a necklace, earrings, and a funky bracelet, and these are so fun and easy to make. And the best thing about this particular project is that you're able to take your one word for the year. If you've picked a one little word that you want to incorporate into how you live your life this year, that's the perfect word to stamp on your jewelry. If you don't have a word, I want you to think of some words that make you feel bold and empowered. This video is sponsored by Chico's in their Growing Boulder campaign. I'm 41 years bold. How bold are you let me know in the comments below Chico's wants you to feel good no matter what your age their clothing is designed for you to express your personality with confidence and I just love the fact that they are embracing women of a certain age I always feel like I'm kind of left out of a lot of clothing lines a lot of stores in the mall I feel like they just don't represent me and I love that Chico's does represent me and they embrace women no matter what age they are so I'll have a link to Chico's and the Growing Boulder campaign in the video description if you want to check it out and see what they have to offer um, and I think you'd be pleasantly surprised so when you're thinking about your words that you want to stamp on your jewelry I want you to think of words that make you feel good that make you feel strong that make you feel empowered and inspired jot them down and uh, try to find words that will fit the size of blanks that you're going to be using and we'll talk a little bit about that as we get into the tutorial you can find the supplies that I'm using at any craft store and I will link them up. I will actually leave a uh, uh, materials list in the video description so that you can find everything easily and um, this is a great beginner jewelry making project and also a really good beginner metal stamping project if you don't like to wear jewelry like this maybe you want to make a keychain so that every time you walk out the door you're looking at that word that inspires you it might be enjoy if you want to be reminded to enjoy every moment of your day it might be happy it might be fierce it might be passionate it might be bold you pick your word and I'm gonna show you how to turn it into jewelry here are some of the tools and supplies you're going to need to do metal stamp jewelry. So what we have here is um, an anvil, and this is just like a, a nice sturdy metal surface to work on. You're going to need some stamping blanks, and they come in all different uh, kind of finishes and sizes. So if you're ordering online, you just want to make sure that what you buy is going to be big enough to stamp into, because they do come pretty small as well. Um, what I'm going to be using for today's projects will be some uh, links and dangles mainly. So these here uh, have a hole on either end so they'd be good to use on a necklace or bracelet to link things together. And these here only have a hole on one end so it's good for like dangling as the bottom element on like an earring or maybe a dangle on a necklace so um, just to kind of give you some ideas there um, I'm also going to use these cool keys now if you find that you have a dangle but you wish it was a, a link I'm going to show you how you can put a hole in your metal pieces because you may be limited to what you can find so this thing right here is called a metal punch and um, it's it works by um, kind of a screwing motion and you you turn the screw to make the hole in your um, in your blank and there's two different sizes here there's a tiny size and there's a, a medium size and I want to match what I have on the other side so I'm going to use this larger size and then what you're going to do is you are going to put this in the um, the slot where the hole where the uh, hole punch that you want is and then I kind of just tighten it down just so I can kind of wiggle it around in there and get the uh, size that I want and then you're going to tighten it and just kind of let your fingers keep that um, that piece from twisting out of your hands you just don't want it to move and just keep twisting and then you're gonna feel um, feel it push through and then you're gonna see there's like no effort required anymore and that's how you know you've gone through the blank so now we're gonna untwist it and we'll pull it out of there and see what we have I like to do this before stamping but you can do it afterwards if you want and so this way you end up with a link now and you can use that to connect a couple pieces or you can use that as like the front of a necklace and have your chain going from either side so it's a really easy way to handle that and these are not very expensive I think they're probably around ten dollars at the craft store so if you think you're going to be doing a lot of um, metal stamp jewelry it's a great idea so here are a couple of examples here this I did like a dangle I used the word strong I thought that was a really empowering word and this one I used I did the word love and I actually bent it and the way you do that is by using a dapping block so why don't I show you how to um, stamp a link and then I'll show you how to shape it on a damping dapping block like that so what you want to do is get your anvil 
and you're also going to want some very low tech tape. You can either use washi tape or you could use a masking tape, just something you can tape your um, element down with. And um, I think that um, we'll do, let's do love, let's do that because that's a nice short one and I can show you how to bend that. So the first thing I'm going to do is tape my um, blank down to my anvil and I'm just going to tape over the holes and that's going to also help me figure out how much stamping room I have. Just tape it down. It's not going to hold it too well, but it'll hold it uh, still enough while you do your stamping. And then I've got my little uh, my little dies here, my little stamps. And I'm going to start off with the L. Just make sure you got it going the right way. You want to hold it so that the metal part is the letter is against the blank. You want to hold it firmly. Then you want to take a small hammer, and then you're going to whack it twice firmly. Okay. Now can you see that we've got a letter L there? If I catch it to the light. All right, we're going to repeat that with these other letters here. And you can choose whatever words are meaningful to you. A lot of people will choose their one word for the year. That would be a perfect um, a perfect word to do on your metal blank. Just readjust the tape if you need to. And just make sure that your letters are going the right way. And it's really a very, very simple process. Okay. So there we've got the word love. All right, so then you're gonna grab, and it's a, these will all stamp the same way. So you just um, just make sure you have enough room to fit your, your word. So if you have a longer word, you're gonna want something with a little bit longer space to be able to stamp it. If you know it's gonna hang down this way, then you probably want your letters to go, you know, kind of up and down like that, just so it can be read fairly easily. So then what you're gonna do is grab your dapping block and this set was not expensive. I think it was about $8. And what I like to do first is I like to put my blank in there and gently press it in with my fingers just to kind of get it um, to start to bend. And then you're going to get your um, your little dapping die and you're going to gently, you're going to keep tapping until you bend it to the shape that you want. And then when you take it out, you can see that your uh, piece has been bent. It's got a nice smooth curve to it. I know it can look a little uh, sketchy when you begin, but it does um, it does even out and look really nice. Then another thing you can do when you're done is you can either grab a little acrylic paint or a marker or alcohol ink and just kind of dab your ink over the um, letters so it gets into the recesses. And acrylic paint works really well for this. You can just brush it over there. Uh, and don't worry about it getting messy on the outside because that's going to wipe right off. And that way you can accent your letters. Now black would be a little bit more, um, a little bit more, uh, would show up a little bit better. But I like the red too. So, you know, you can do whatever color you want really. It's completely up to you. And you can add more if you need to, but that just helps your letters stand up a little bit better. So that's how you make all of the stamped elements to your jewelry. Okay, here are the supplies we're going to need for our earrings, necklace, and bracelet. And the only tools we're going to need are um, a couple just uh, needle nose pliers. And these are basically to open and close jump rings. Now the jump rings I'm using today are oval jump rings. And the reason I'm using an oval versus a circle is that the split on the oval jump ring is on the long side. And when you're wearing a piece of jewelry, it's going to pull. The, the stress and pressure is going to be on the narrow ends. So it's not the, none of these metal pieces will ever be able to slip um, at the split of the ring even if it got pulled and there was a gap so it's just for a little extra security so um, if you if you do like to use jump rings a lot um, especially on projects like this consider getting an oval jump ring so the first thing we're going to do is the earrings and I'm just gonna open up my jump ring so to do this you want to grab both sides of the ring and twist them in opposite directions you never want to yank it open uh, because that will weaken the um, the connection Okay, you can see that it's, twist, it's twisted open. Now what we're going to do is grab our um, our little um, little piece here that we stamped, and we're going to put that on. And then what I like to do is grab the earring wire. I want to make sure it's going to be facing the right direction. Okay, so I am just going to slip that on there and just make sure that it's facing. So I want the front of the earring, how it's going to look on the front of my ear, and this to be facing outward. Once I have uh, decided that that is correct, I'm going to close my jump ring, just like this. You grab both sides, 
and I do have a really in-depth uh, jewelry tutorial video, um, jewelry technique video on my channel. I'll link it above and below in the video description so you can check that out. And this is our little uh, our little earrings happy and brave so i think you should choose words that you want to be reminded of like in my necklace here i chose the word enjoy and we're going to be doing the same exact technique to attach our jump rings we're going to be attaching them to the chain and to our um, plaque here in the middle on both sides and then i'll show you how to do the clasps after i get that done Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see um, a little better. I decided I would show you this side just in case you were unfamiliar with this. Again, we're going to open up our jump ring. We're going to grab on either side of the split and we're going to twist in opposite directions. Okay, and the beadboard is handy because we can let everything lay flat as we're putting it together so we know everything's going to hang right. So I just put that in the little plaque that we stamped and then I'm going to attach it to my last chain link here. All right, and then we're going to close that up, but I do have to lift it off the board to close it. That's all right. As long as I know that everything's facing the same way, it's going to work. And some people can get by with just one pair of pliers, but I really find it necessary to have the two um, because I just don't wouldn't have the strength of my fingers to be able to close those jump rings. So there we can see we have a really nice uh, connection there. You can do the same thing shorter for a bracelet. Now for our clasps, I have a toggle and I have a, um, a loop there. So I am going to do a jump ring again. So really the only technique you need to know for this is opening and closing a jump ring. And you're just gonna make sure that you have everything lined up on your board the way you want it. So the end of our necklace, and this is gonna be the same exact thing for the other side, end of the necklace onto the jump ring, uh, one, edge of our, one end of our clasp on the jump ring, close it up, and then do the exact same thing with the other clasp on the other side. Now when you're done, you're going to have uh, your necklace all put together. All you have to do to open and close it is simply put the toggle through the loop and you're good to go. And you've got a really nice, um, you have a really nice connection there. And the wonderful thing about making your own jewelry is that you can make it as long or as short as you like. So for our last technique, we're going to be doing the bracelet here. So this time we are just using jump rings and our stamped pieces. And I decided to curve my keys and use these curved links um, because they'll, they're going to shape around our wrist really well. And again, our one technique you got to know, opening and closing the jump rings. You could even go ahead and open them all before you began if you wanted to, but you're simply going to attach um, all four of your links. Just make sure they're like both facing out. See how I'm going to put that on there? So they're both facing the same direction. They can want to wiggle away, away from you like that, but see those are both going the same way. And then we're going to close that because they do like to get away from us. And we're going to repeat that um, for the other two pieces, but we're going to leave one end open so we can put our clasp on. Close that right up. And remember what I said about the stress on the links are going to be on the, the skinny edge and the splits on the long edge so you don't have to worry about those pulling through. So connect those other two pieces and then I'll show you how to do the clasp. So to put the clasp on we are simply going to again use a jump ring and we are going to attach the clasp to the last link there. So my rule of thumb is when I'm using a toggle clasp um, and I've got charms like this, I will make sure that I put the um, the toggle part on the skinnier end. Now, both of these are pretty skinny because I had the end of a key there, but if I was on the round part of the key, I would use the, uh, the ring on that part and I would use the toggle on the skinnier part because that just gives you a little bit more space to be able to feed that through. Like I could feed that through like that if I needed to, if I needed that room to, to put it on. And I just find toggle clasps personally to a little easier to uh, to put on my own wrist. And so that's why I like to use them for bracelets and necklaces. But you could use whatever type of clasp you wanted to really. But there you go. It's just, it catches a light and it's really lightweight and just really fun and whimsical. And then you can be reminded of the words that are your either word of the year or whatever words make you feel good and strong and bold. That was so much fun. Here is a jewelry on. Now I did want to note that on the earrings, depending on how close your hole is to the end of the blank, you may not need the jump ring. And depending on which way the loop goes on your earring finding, you might not want the jump ring. So you can play that by ear. Ah, earrings play by ear. Ah, it's so funny. Um, I'm, I'm bold. 41 years bold.
people. Um, so you can do whatever works best with the materials that you have on hand. I hope this inspired you to be bold, to embrace your life, to be proud of your age. I mean, 41 years. I couldn't have done it in 30. Yeah, you know, we are the sum of our years and we need to embrace that. And I want to thank Chico's for sponsoring this video and encourage you to check them out. There's a link in the video description. And uh, I really just love the fact that they are embracing women of all ages and helping us all feel confident and bold um, with whatever life may bring our way. I hope you enjoyed this jewelry making tutorial. I hope you give it a try. Until next time, happy crafting.